Hair loss in women is a very, very serious and emotional thing. Uh, it's not to say that it isn't emotional for men too, because I've had more men fall apart in my office, but for women it's different. Um, statistically speaking and in their minds, women aren't supposed to lose their hair, but a lot of them do. A lot of them suffer from the same types of problems that men do, but when they have it, 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 it strikes a different note. Uh, it's very difficult, and I'll tell you this is very true and very personal from my standpoint. Nothing is more difficult for me than to see a female patient who comes in. She's got hair loss issues, and they may be severe. And I have to say to her, listen, I've got nothing that will help you. You're not a candidate for hair transplant. Um, we can try X, Y, and Z, but I'm not sure. Um, that's not the case anymore. I've got a few more tools in my toolbox that, that help quite a bit and have been very efficient and at least helping me give some of my female patients some hope. One of them, of course, is the low-level laser therapy. It's very effective with women who are having uh, some degree of hair thinning. I found it to be extremely effective. The other, of course, being the new addition of the A-cell and the PRP. So I have new tools. There are some medications that I can use with uh, my female patients that I will on occasion use. It depends on their circumstances and so forth. Uh, but you really have to look at hair loss in, in my female patients as a larger pie and there's other secondary causes so being a hair loss expert I have to investigate those things are they having iron deficiency problems are they having hormone imbalance problems are they having thyroid disorders things that have to be assessed and directed first many times unfortunately my female patients come in and I'm the last one they've seen they've been through the whole workup and no one has any news for them other than nothing I can do to help you when if they'd seen me maybe a year earlier, I could have started them on a process that may have given them some improvement. So it's certainly different than when you're dealing with male patients because I would say the vast majority of male patients, if they have adequate donor hair, can be good candidates for transplant. It's not always the case with female patients. So you may have to look at what can you do to help preserve them, keep them from losing any more hair. But I, I have found honestly with my female patients any degree of improvement that you can give them. Um, they're eternally grateful to you. So it's, it's, a, it's a responsibility and it's one I don't take lightly.